doctrine of my self-will. You could look at the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 42. Jesus went before the Father and said, Lord, this cup will be very, very bitter for me. Please take it away. I don't know if you know that that time Jesus prayed that prayer at the garden was the only time he requested for prayer support from his disciples. But because they themselves were not broken, in that they do not know the role that prayer, prayer plays in brokenness, they kept sleeping. So when he went to check on them after praying that prayer the first time, he came back to pray a second time. At that point in time, he said, Lord, shatter my will. Let your will be done. Number four. Brokenness is softening the soil of my heart. Softening the soil of my heart. It is breaking up the clothes of resistance that could prevent the seed from penetrating the ground and taking root. Uh, we have somebody that is very dear to us in our family. 2007, I lost my biological mother, so I truly needed a mother. And I found a mother in her. She clocked 80 in March. On the 19th of June, she died. The day we rushed her to the hospital, she told everybody that she would not go if I do not permit her to go. I looked at the way she was breathing and I noticed that something is wrong on the inside. So I insisted that we needed to go to the hospital. We got to the hospital. She stayed in the hospital only for three full days. On the fourth day, she died. What was the result? She had blood clothing in her lungs. And that's a sign that something had happened in the heart. Her dearest friend died a couple of months ago. And the pain and the weight of the departure of her friend came upon her. Coupled with the fact that as an aging person, though her body looks fresh, she stays at home all the time. So you cannot, you cannot exempt her or excuse her from not having deep thoughts about her own friend departing. How will she manage? A very close friend. You know, there are friends that stick it closer than uh, brothers. That was that kind of friend to her. So... Before you know it, we got the result and we noticed that it is the blood clothing and a few other things that was not discovered on time that killed her. When we talk about brokenness, we're saying it is the softening of the soil of your heart. Are you aware that your heart is a ground? It's a soil. And if you allow things to gather or converge, it will serve like blood clothings and it can kill until you let your heart free of animosity, revenge, resentment, bitterness, hatred. Oh my God, you can die because it kills. So we must allow God to soften our hearts. God said to them, I will give you a heart of flesh in place of your heart of stone. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. Joel 2 chapter 12. Uh, chapter 2 verse 12. He said, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, with all your heart, and with fasting and weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of a great kindness, and repented him of the evil. I remember a couple of years ago, we were in Benin. If you are from Benin here, I just want to share what I experienced. I do not want to spite your people. After all, I was from the, I happened to be from the old Bender State before Delta State was carved out. So I'm talking about my area. We attended a burial ceremony. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of people who are paid to mourn. <laughs> Mourners, yes. And uh, when the curse came in from the mortuary, you hear something like, Ew. Oh, oh, my God. And for those of us who came in, the way they mourn the departure of the person touched our hearts. But we never knew how, how unoriginal their tears were until rice with big chickens began passing. People
people who were crying, even tears was flowing. And then the first bowl of rice passed, the second one, the third one. The other one said, Oh, my, you didn't hear the cry. You see, all the chicken and the rice, they passed. Clean your eyes, go collect our own. God said to them, I don't want such tears that will not touch the heart. Brokenness is not about shedding tears. Brokenness is about rending your heart so that God can rend the heavens for you. Isaiah 64, no matter how well and how many times you pray it, may never be a reality if there's no rending of your heart. The rending of your heart attracts the rending of the heavens. Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, my heart is ready for a rending. Now I can't hear you, but I say, Lord, my heart is ready for a rending. In the name of Jesus. In Matthew 13, 20, the Bible says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with great joy, Receiveth it. Verse 21 says, Yet he hath no root in himself. But do it for a while. Do it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. When you have a heart, that is not ready for God to plant his word. If it is forcefully planted, after a while, it will fall off. That's why you see some people, when they are in church, you're talking about brokenness, and you are going through the kind of surgical experiences we went through in the morning, you see they can cry very well, but the moment they move out of the place where they finished crying from, the next thing you see is, they will tell you, if anybody provokes them, say, look, my Bible apart. Eh? Divinity apart, son of man must do what? Must defend himself. I see someone who just came out of the church fighting. And in most cases, what they fight, what they fight for are not relevant things. Um, they served me food in a rubber plate in my house. I eat with golden plates and all of that. Number five. Brokenness is death to self and an emancipation into the different depths of godliness. Emancipation into the different depths of godliness where you are completely lost in God. In the book of uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul said when he experienced brokenness, he no longer lived. The life he now lived is the one he got from Jesus Christ, who loved him so dearly and gave himself up. I keep telling the church, I say, look, I do, I do not want to minister to a people, pastor a people, shepherd a people who will not enter heaven. As I fight to make you enter heaven, I also fight for myself. The reason I say that is that until we take up the life of God, and we no longer find ourselves. But each time we want to see if there's anything like us that exists, we go into the word of God and we find ourselves there. So I say to them, be lost in the word of God. When we look for you, let's not see the old you. Did you notice now that we pray more? But great things happen less. Do you notice now that we have different Bible translations, many powerful speakers, but the hearts of men in church are still in darkness. I still prefer the Christianity of the 70s. I'm not against growth. I'm not antisocial. But I know when the dimensions is changing without the originals. Brokenness must be looked into. It takes you into the different depths. And dimensions of holiness. Dimensions of holiness. Holiness has to do with the spirit of God living inside of you and taking charge of your body. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 4 talks of the spirit of holiness.
when we talk about the depths of holiness, it also has to do with the stages of baptisms prescribed in scriptures. Daddy wrote many books. In one of his books, The Revival Fire, just as he has preached in all of his, majority of his messages where he talks about catching the fire and spreading it. He, talks, he talked about three kinds of baptisms. And that drew my attention. I was given a subject to tweet in one of our East African conferences. So I began to look at the, the issue of baptisms. And brethren, I discovered five different dimensions and levels of baptisms. Number one, daddy mentioned it. We call it a mansion baptism or water baptism. According to scriptures, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 3 and verse 3. Luke 3 verse 3. I don't know if the media can help me, so I'll be a little bit fast. I have a lot to share with you so that we, we, don't, do, we don't miss doing all I need to do within the time frame I have. Okay. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. That's what this a mansion or water baptism does to you. It brings you repentance for the remission of sins. Number two, the, diff, the second dimension is the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit's baptism. Daddy talked about it as well. This one is for the newness of life. It is for the newness of life and then power for service, power for witnessing. As chapter 1 and verse 8. Power for service, power for witnessing. Witnessing to bring more persons to the kingdom of God. And he says, and you can't receive power until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Putting it in the exact words, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and then all to all the uttermost parts of the earth. Somebody say amen. The third baptism is the baptism of fire. It is not just baptism of the Holy Spirit where you speak in tongues. Now listen, when you receive the baptism of the Spirit, one of the evidence is that you speak in tongues, unknown tongues, as the Spirit gives you what? Utterance. I call that one the rolling of tongues. Roll, 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 right? There is an ignition. There is an, there is an ignition. That is to help you stay in touch with God. And once you receive that baptism, then the power to proclaim the word is given to you. The power to confess that Jesus is Lord. Not just at the level of salvation that comes when you repent. But being able to witness the same. But you see, the baptism of fire is beyond tongue speaking. The baptism of fire is a different level of emancipation where the fire of God is not just in your tongue. It's not just in your heart. It sort of encapsulates all about you. And then anything you have to do, you are doing it with the spirit of urgency. With the mind that there is a time frame for everything. Hey, brethren, one day, I, I do what we call midnight prayer watch to the glory of God. I've done it for two years and about five months. Every night. What I can tell you is that I never knew I could do it. But when the grace came, Came, I began to enjoy it. One of the nights I was to, you know, prepare prayer points like, let's go there and do the fire, fire work. And the Lord said to me, no, tell the people that I'm coming back again. No more time. Our time on earth is short. I don't know when last you had that anyway. Because if you knew that like um, a buyer who goes to the market, when you finish buying, you must go home. You must go home. You must return home. Jesus said to me in that prayer, he said, go and tell them that I am coming back again. So I turned prayer session to preaching session. 
And when I asked the people if they enjoyed it, they said, yes, we needed it at this moment. When you receive the baptism of fire, the spirit of urgency comes upon you. The speed you need comes. This Holy Ghost restlessness that will make you not to be complacent. Nobody will beg you to pray, will come. You know, sometimes we beg people to go to church. Church members, go to church. <laughs> when this fire comes, nobody will tell you to go to church. The fire will move you. The fire comes with a chariot. And this chariot, even the winds cannot hinder it. You remember Elijah and Elisha? On the day when God was to take Elijah away, what appeared? What showed up? Huh? Chariot of fire. <laughs> Did you notice that it came also with this wild wind? And the wind took up metal. And Elijah was gone. Notice something. Because Elisha knew the importance of this baptism of fire, which he had asked for in form of asking for the double portion of the spirit of his master, the, the wind that took metal up could not carry the mantle or prevent the mantle from falling. The mantle dropped. In this conference, Mantles are already dropping. My question is, how many of you are sensitive to know that mantles are dropping? We're talking about the fire. God has said to you, you are supposed to win 10 million souls before you die. You are waiting and praying, Lord, I don't want to die. But your days are counting. The more you go, the more God reduces your lifespan. You don't know that your life on earth is short. Hey, we all need baptism of fire. I say we need baptism of fire. Brother, you need baptism of fire. Woman of God, you need the baptism of fire. When the baptism of fire comes, uh, Dr. Deborah was talking about fashion in the morning, in the area of the loss of the eyes. It's good to look good. But if you look good on the outside, and you are ugly on the inside, it means the fire has not entered. You need the fire. So you can count the work of God more important than the clothes you are putting on. Praise the name of the Lord. I found the, I found the fourth baptism. And this one is hard. And that is how it, that where it consigns brokenness. It is called the baptism of death. The baptism of death. In this case, you are baptized into the suffering and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 20, 22 and 23. Matthew 20. I don't know if I have it. Matthew chapter 20. But Jesus answered and said, Know not what you ask. You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And be baptized into the baptism that I am baptized with. They said unto him, we are able. Here's the next verse. He said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Do you know the two persons that their mother asked that for? The two sons of Zebedee. Go and read the, what's this book of Mattia? Go and read how they died. They died the death of the cross. But they said to those who crucified them, please, we are not worthy. Peter in particular. Is it Peter? Not Peter. Not Peter. Okay, but I'm sure you know. He said, look. Don't, don't crucify me the way my Lord was crucified. But they died. They took up that baptism. Hear me. The reason why you have the ability to respond to everything people say to you is because you are still alive in the flesh. A dead man does not talk. I remember many years ago, brethren, somehow when I see Christians who still boast about their past life in radicality in the world, I say to them, you need to go to the potter's house. 
I grew up in where we call AJ City, Ajegunle in Lagos. We used bottles to, bottle to design the body of people. I was never a thief. I never took anything like smoke. I was not on drugs. I never womanized. But we lived in an environment that makes you feel that, you know, being tough, rough, is good. So when I became a minister of God, I said, Lord, there are some of those things I used to do I still see in me. What do you want to do with me? He said, come, let me show you what to do. He took me into the house and said, stay here. When I'm done with you, you will come out. Three years. I prayed every night that time. I start my prayers. I was not asking for miracles, but I saw the miracles. I've seen dead people come back to life. When I began to pray. But you know what God was doing? He was not giving me the power to do miracles. Some of you seek for power to do miracles. I no longer seek for it because I have come to understand scriptures. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, there are many things they will do. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues and all of that. As I began to pray, the Lord said to me, I am removing all of those past things you used to do from you. But I still notice that when people make me angry, I talk too fast. I am quick to respond. So I began to pray for peace because then I had studied about the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I noticed I needed peace in order not to respond to everything. So I asked him for peace in fasting and prayer. Seven days I was fasting. On the seven days I have given you peace. I never knew how to test if the peace had come. Until... That time, I didn't have a car. I used to have a church in Rumomasi. I finished from Market Road. I went straight to Market Junction, if you know that area very well. I was going to LLM1. That day, it had rained. Now, you know what happens when it rains? The bus stops will be filled with passengers, and the vehicles will be few. So, one came, and I needed to do my Lagos style and found a way to enter. So, the big boys who were there, one of them discovered that I was too smart, smarter than him. Before he could say Jack Robinson, Mike was inside of the vehicle. And so in annoyance, two of them came and pulled me out. What did make you push us? How you manage enter? I brought me down and gave me two hot slaps. I looked at them. I remembered my Bible. I remembered the past. I remembered my prayer. I remember what God said to me. I just used my hand and cleaned. I said, God bless you. I said, enter. Then they entered. Not quite long. I didn't know there were some boys I had ministered to. It's good to evangelize. But you cannot evangelize if you are not broken. So, I didn't know that two boys I had ministered to, for the fact that they don't come to our church, doesn't mean that they didn't receive Christ. They noticed that these two men slapped me and entered the vehicle. They pulled them out to and began to slap them. What did make you slap our pastor? <laughs> it was that day I knew that God had given me peace. Your brokenness must be tested. Are you hearing me? Before, I was not used to laughing. When people see me, they say, you're always happy. Yes, it has become natural because the supernatural came in. I was not like that before. Are you hearing me? Can I ask you a question? Are you broken or you have been breaking brokenness? The baptism of death. It has to do with completely being brought into the realm of experience by the things you suffer. Things that teach you patience, tolerance, obedience to divine warnings. In Matthew chapter 27 verse 19, Matthew 27, 19, when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man? I underlined in my Bible, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. This is Pilate's wife. <laughs> she had an, an encounter that brought her compulsory brokenness. And she began to warn the husband, don't have anything to do with this just man. Because in my dream, I suffered many things. That's why I said, this baptism into suffering and death has to do with the experiences that bring you patience, tolerance, obedience to divine warnings. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible says, though he were a son, yet 
learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. I told you I'll be sharing in teaching. Philippians, Philippians 1 29. We are not just called only to enjoy the glory of God. We are also called to suffer with him. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's talk about the process of brokenness. Process of brokenness. Jeremiah chapter 18. 1 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 18. From verse 1 to verse 6. That has to do with the instruction God gave to his servant, the prophet, to go to the potter's house. Look at it. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, verse 2. Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrote a walk on the wheels for. And the, the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. As seemed good to the potter to make it. Yes. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 6. O house of Israel, can I do with you? As this potter said the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I'll tell you a short story and then I'll go back to that scripture, expand on it a little bit, and then I'll move further before I close. How many of you believe in power service? Where the man of God comes to church. And from the beginning of the moment he mounted the rostrum or the altar, power flows everywhere. People are slain in the spirit. How many of you like that? I like it. I do. Because the spirit of God uses it to change lives. Can I say to you, I am not, I'm not against it. I still, when I go to crusades, I am a crusader. In 10 years... I was able to go to some villages in Abia State, Imo State, Anambra, Enugu, Akwai Bom, uh, Cross River. You know what I was doing? I was going to where they have shrines. And I was bringing them. So in 10 years, I recorded bringing down 88 shrines and altars. So I love the power thing even till now. So a friend invited me to his church. And uh, he watched my, one of my video clips in Lagos, 2003. And he asked his friend, and he said, so where is this man? The man told him that I'm in Portacot. He's in Portacot, his friend. The one I visited is in Lagos. He said, how can he be in Portacot? And he wouldn't tell me about him. So he brought me to his church, and I ministered like that. People were rolling, they were vomiting. And then I went, I went to their church another, at another time. The brother picked up microphone and said, that was when I finished preaching, that particular period. He said, all the while this man of God has been coming here, and the last time he came, this is the time that I have received something of the Lord from him. And I wanted to know what he meant. He said, this is the first time you came and you taught us the word of God, because that's what I've been looking for. He said, I've been falling to the ground, and I discovered that my life is not changed. That's peculiar to him. All right? I think there's a bottle here. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. For the first time, in his own case, that was the first time he encountered God by the word. Why am I saying this? Brethren, power show without transformation will lead a lot of people to hell. God said to a prophet in the person of Jeremiah, I don't know if you know the pedigree of the prophets of the Bible. There are about five of them you cannot just give a wave of hand. Jeremiah is one of them. The transformation that occurred in the time of Josiah, he, he helped Josiah. He was a spiritual counselor. He was a spiritual father and mentor. That's why when, when Josiah died at a very tender age of about 49 or so, the man mourned for Josiah. 
Jeremiah was not one of those mere prophets. God, God will deal with him by taking him to the realms of the spirit to show him uncommon things. And at this time, God said, I don't mind your pedigree. I want you to go down to the potter's house. That's where I'm going to speak to you. That's where I'm going to speak to you. God doesn't speak to those who live in ivory houses. He speaks to those who are in the wilderness. <laughs> are you hearing me? He speaks to those. You know, John the Baptist was in the wilderness. There were men who were in the palace. God left the palace. He went to the wilderness to speak to, to John the Baptist. Brokenness. The process. Number one, from that scripture we read. You must go down to the potter's house. This is called the valley of gold mine. You go there to dig for the clay that is in you. The top or loamy soil is good for growing crops, but bad for building houses and molding vessels that God will use. You need to go on your knees and live by the books. Until you go down, you cannot see, neither will you learn, the process of what it takes to stand out. Until you go to the potter's house, going down to the potter's house, you cannot yield yourself for a deep walk. You cannot have absolute surrender. Neither can you undress for circumcision. I want you to listen to something I gleaned from the word of God about circumcision. In Genesis chapter 34, Diana was raped and the prince, the prince that raped him decided to make attempts to marry him. But when her own, when her own brothers came back and heard that their sister, their only sister was raped, they were, uh, they were raged. So Simeon and Levi, two brothers in whose tent cruelty dwell, they mobilized themselves and went to meet the prince and the king and said, your son raped our sister. Now he's talking about marriage. No problem. We will allow him marry our who? Our sister. But on one condition, that you allow the male in the land to go through circumcision. Agreement was sealed and signed. And then the circumcision was performed. While the men waited for the process of healing, of their circumcision, Simeon and Levi came and brought out their machets, their weapons, and began to slaughter. And none of the mighty men of Shechem was able to respond to them. Why? They were in the, they were in the period of the healing of circumcision. A man who is going through the healing of circumcision cannot respond. And so when God said to him, go down to the potter's house, he was simply saying to him, go to where you can remove your clothes that have covered all of the shame on your inside. And then let me circumcise you. God wants us to go down. If we don't go down to the potter's house, we cannot stand out. May the Lord help us to stand out. I didn't hear that. Amen. Number two, from that scripture as well. You let God show you how he molds the clay into shape. God cuts the clay out of the dust, out of the ground. And then what does he do? He begins to mold the clay by pouring enough water to soften the texture of the soil. Then, until there is a thorough mixture... It will not form it into shape. Listen to me and let me give you an understanding of what the Holy Spirit showed me. You know very well that as we read, whether in verse 4 or so, God doesn't use a man. He has not finished processing. He doesn't. The, the potter, having cut the, the clay soil, not the loamy soil, not the sandy soil, because they cannot come together. See, you can bear fruit to the physical eye, but if there is no fruit of the Spirit, your work will suffer losses. 
But may that not be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, the potter had to bring the sand, the clay soil together, pour much water, and then when he sees that the mixture is perfect, he will now bring it to the wheel. And then he starts working on it. <laughs> Listen, when he is done, he brings what he has molded to shape and puts it in the oven. After a while, he goes there again. He brings it out. Look at what he will do. He will hit. What is he checking? The sound. Quality of perfection. If it is still very heavy, <laughs> he will crush it again and push it back. That's what God is still doing with some of us because the different processes we've gone through, we do not allow him to finish the work. Brokenness is a process. Lift your hand and say, Lord, please give me the patience to complete the process. Number three, there at the potter's house, you come into the wheel. You let God turn you on all sides, back and forth, around the circle, anti-clockwise or clockwise direction. He lifts you up, checks you. You allow him to turn you on all sides until you mar his hands with, with stains. If God has not taken away your stains and he could give an evidence of the fact that those stains are in his hands, your, your so-called process of brokenness has not even started. God will need to look at the refuse dump where he kept those things that he removed from you. So, the time taken in the process is determined by the togetherness or cooperation of the clay. And you are the clay. God is the potter. Number four. Allow the burning process for perfection to be completed. Allow the burning process. In Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10. Isaiah 48 verse 10. I don't know if I can have it there. The reason why you need to go through the fire, like our sister who prayed, Dr. Okojaja, she was talking about the refiner's fire. Look at, look at Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. He said, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee. Where? In the furnace of affliction. That Malachi, our sister quoted, talks of the refiner's fire, but not without the the fuller soap, so that when God is done with you, you might offer unto him sacrifices in righteousness. Number five, become a vessel sanctified and meet for the master's use. Oh God, how we seek to minister in international conferences. How we seek to be heard by men. Now that social media is everywhere, if you don't have money to pay for television adverts, <laughs> You know what? Just get your phone right in the bedroom of your house. You can reach the world. And then some are paying heavily to make sure that their views <laughs> is much. They have greater viewership. I wish I could do that, but the, the passion to do it is not there. When we do at midnight, we, say, we just say, as many that God brings away, let them hear the word. And many have been blessed. Many have been blessed. I want you to hear this. Some of us may not stand on high podiums and high platforms until God has finished the process. Until he knows that we will not underperform or disappoint him. What does it look like? In a church in Portacot, I will not mention name. I know the minister of God. A dear father in the Lord. He brought in a pastor who came from Cameroon. Gave him testimony, showed pictures of how people vomit charms and different things. And he loved the pastor. No, the evangelist. So the evangelist stayed with him. This man of God took care of him very well. Gave him a house and was doing everything for him to make him happy. With the hope that one day they will plant him. But he wanted him to stay on probation in the church. And after about two years... Stories started coming up. In the first place, he told the man of God that he was never married. Unfortunately, he had been married with two children in Cameroon. 
In the church there, one of the minister's daughter came to the man of God and said, Daddy, I want to tell you something that I cannot tell my parents. I am pregnant. Uh, the man of God said, no, no, no problem. I will handle it. But who impregnated you? Two weeks, the little girl could not answer. A girl of 16. This man of God was patient. Then one day he said to her, I will tell your parents if you cannot tell me who impregnated you. He said, Daddy, I don't know how you will handle it, but if I tell you, will you manage it? The man of God said, yes. He said, it is evangelist, so, so, and so. <laughs> As if that was not enough, he had promised two other sisters marriage. He had traveled with one of them to their village to do, to perform rites. So when I heard the story, I said, there was a time I taught the church on what I called spreading flame, how to spread the gospel of the kingdom. Now this one have an evil spreading flame. You see what unbrokenness would do to the so-called a man of God. Are you aware that the man called Cain means a man from God? For the mother said, I have gotten a man from God. What now brought the spirit of mother into him? It did not allow brokenness to have its full cause. Oh Lord, we want to be broken. And we are here today to yield ourselves. Lord, help us. So, you become a sanctified vessel meet for the master's use. So, you engage in every good work when this happens and then you expect a deeper work from within. Number six, I talked about the test of brokenness. I told you about the slap I was given, two hot ones. If it were to be before, honestly, even as a pastor, I'll use my Bible to stone those, those people. Now, I'm telling you. <laughs> but that day after the prayer, I now knew that God had given me patience. Number six, be tested for brokenness. You know, they say, go and test for COVID-19. Go and test for, test for AIDS. Please, go for a test I call what? Test of brokenness. If you cannot sit down and listen to preachers who are lesser than you and make sense out of their nonsense, you need to reconsider brokenness. If you cannot practice forgiveness, if you cannot shun sin, if you have not overcome the elementary forces of this life, then you will fail the test. You must be tested or else you will still be negative with sin and the weight that doth easily beset you. Number seven, don't talk about brokenness. Showcase it. Don't talk about brokenness. Showcase it. Make it your person. Shine it like your light. Let men see and taste the sweetness of your brokenness so that you can stand out. Okay, before we pray, there are two types of brokenness. Two types of brokenness. Number one, I call it the crushing for reshaping into an excellent you. The crushing for reshaping to get an excellent you. This has to do with circumcision. That requires that you sit down and then undress yourself for healing. Just as I shared with you about what happened in Genesis chapter 34. The second type which we have mistaken for the first. The first is the one we're discussing. The second type is a hurt or pain due to affliction or uncomfortable situations. Like Jacob's or rather Job's supposed or suggested 42 months of affliction. So approximately Job must have suffered it's not found in the Bible. You know we just do presupposition. Job must have suffered for three years and five months. Within this period, Job went through affliction. Thank God he endured all because there was the real brokenness which had occurred in him. You don't have to uh, mistake this, this pain and uncomfortable conditions you go through for the real brokenness. What settles the issue of affliction is the first brokenness. God wants you to have it. God wants it to be complete in us. In Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15, Isaiah 57 verse 15, 
The Bible says, For thus said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and a broken or a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. I found out from this passage of scripture, the reason I read it, the two places, the two major places where God dwells. In spite of the fact that God is omnipresent, he's one God in one place, in every place. I hope you understand me. He dwells majorly in two places. He dwells in the high and lofty place. The high and holy place. The next place he dwells is, is in you. He dwells in you. He dwells in me. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God lives in us. God cannot live in a church building without the church in the building. You are the church. As I close, you look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says, If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. The atmosphere for battle is ripe. We're talking about brokenness. An inevitable encounter for battle axis. You know what? I don't want to go into the issue of battle axis. It will be as if I'm repeating what was said. Now listen to me. You cannot become God's battle axe without brokenness. If you have to cut down a big tree, don't use a blunt knife. Don't use a blunt machine. Do you know what will sharpen your, your instrument? It is brokenness. I don't know if you know that the reason why David was able to appear and bring down Goliath was because God had taken him through what I call the secret school of God. The secret school of God. We all, for us to appear and confront our Goliaths, we must go through that secret school. We must go through it. It's not palatable, but we must go through it. David confronted Goliath. But that was not the first confrontation he was having. The bear came. The lion showed up. And the God who put him in the wilderness, where nobody remembered him, when he was done teaching him how to deal with Goliath, he brought him out. There are so many, so many demons we cannot conquer until we are broken. Now, this is my last statement, so I don't keep you. Until there is brokenness, there are yokes. You cannot break. There are many Deborahs here, here, many Esthers, who may not show up until they are broken. You read the book of uh, Judges, chapter 4 and chapter 5. I love the poetic writing recorded in chapter 5 about the mighty things that happened when Deborah arose. The question is, where was she? Before she arose. Elijah came up and confronted a man that nobody would dare confront. He said to him, There shall be no rain nor dew until I speak. If you want to be a, a cutting edge apostolic woman, man, boy, girl, then dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. If you are a lecturer here, or you are at the educational gate, like uh, Dr. Mrs. Chinyiro Kojaja. Can I plead with you, ma? Can you people, including uh, Dr. Remind me your name, ma? Okay. And all of you at the educational gate, can I plead with you to pray continuously and fight hard at that gate to see how we can include the course or program called brokenness. What mommy closed her book with is on the need for us to enroll 
in this school. She said it's a school, you know the date of admission, but the date of graduation, you don't know. Rise, let us pray. Is it one minute I have more or seven? How many? Seven, okay. I, I wrote down some prayer points and I want us to pray in wisdom with great commitment. Please, can you lift up your hand and say, Lord, I want to enroll afresh. I, I don't know why those who, who had had their first degrees, second, third, have their masters, they go for their doctorate. Until some of them who want to lecture become professors. Why? The more you learn, the more you want to learn. The more you learn, the more refreshed you are. In case you have enrolled in this, in this institution called the institution of brokenness before, I want you to re-enroll again. I say, Lord, here am I. I want to re-enroll again. Until I bag my professorship. And you keep working on me. I don't want to leave. Father, I don't want to come out unprepared. I don't want to be served as a food that is not done. Because some of us have been serving ourselves to people and they keep wondering, is this person a Christian? The church today looks like the people, the army of Israel in the time of King Saul. I want us to say to the Lord, please, help me, I want to enroll again. Help me, I want to enroll again. Lord, help me. I want to roll and roll again. I yield myself for brokenness. Lift up your hand and cry out with me. And say, oh God, bring me to another level of back baptism. Oh God, bring me to another level of baptism. Somebody open up your mouth and talk to the Lord. Father, bring me into another realm, another level of baptism. Oh, yes. Can I have a backup prayer, please? Can anybody join me? We need to pray just for these few minutes. Lord, bring me to another level, level of brokenness. Another level where all that needs to be taken away is taken away. Bring me to the level where until I approach the fifth level of baptism, which is the, the level of glory. Wherever you are in this arena, whether you are in the kitchen, whether you are at the registration stand, I'd like you to rise in your spirit and say, Lord, take me as I submit myself. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. Lift it up and say, Lord, I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. Lord, I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. Clean me. Clean me. Mold me into, Mold shape, me into shape, and into shape and into size. And into size. Open your mouth and pray in the hey, name of Jesus. Father, I'm, name ready of Jesus. I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Clean me up. Mold me. Shape me into size. Mold me, shape me into size. Ramo Radaya. Ibaratala de Sama Loka. In Seriana Kala Baba Baba Baya. Suparana Kala de Namashaya. In the Loka Tolo Bayana. Oh, yes. Bring me to shape, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord showed me a lady. You are a single lady, you are not married. Lightly dark in complexion. You are of a slim body shape and frame. For me, as I see you in my visionary, you are beautiful to behold. But I say demonic marks, worn on your head and all over your face. It has a badly projected teeth. As if it's the teeth 
of one dish that has the capacity to destroy. And the Lord said to me, because your process of brokenness is not thorough, the enemy has veiled your destiny. Whereas people see you, they don't see your real you. What they see is the beast taken from the altar of wickedness and put upon your head. Everybody lift up your hand and shout to me, say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I submit myself for brokenness. As I submit myself for Every brokenness. strange marks of the devil. Every strange marks Every of covering devil. cast of misrepresentation. Every covering cast of misrepresentation. I pull them off right now. I pull them off right Somebody now. open your mouth and pull oh, them off. Jesus, yes, I pull them off. Pull them, pull them off. off. Pull them off. Every covering cast. Come and practice it. Pull it off. Pull it off. Pull it off. I pull them off. Shall I take paradiania? Ayananania, Nadia, Dodia, Nagolia, Nagaladia, Parana Gelegebo, Shalada, da 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 Pull it, off, pull, it pull it off, pull it off. I pull it off. In the name of Jesus, that individual, there are three areas in your life that the enemy has stopped certain things from happening. But as we pray this one more prayer, those things shall be addressed. In your marriage, your business, and your ministry, everything is down. Lift up your hand, everybody. And say, my destiny, my prayer life. My destiny, my prayer life. No, wait, wait. This is a prayer you shout. As one, knowing yourself as this, this instrument of war. Don't pray another thing. In the spirit, a lot will happen. Lift up your hand and say, my destiny, my prayer life. 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 Arise. Arise. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. My destiny, my prayer life. Open your mouth. My prayer life, my destiny. My prayer life, my, my destiny. Prayer life. Destiny. You must be redeemed. My prayer life, my destiny. You must be redeemed. 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 Jesus. You must be redeemed. My prayer life, my destiny. You must be redeemed. 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 You must be Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. My time is up. But listen, I saw a vision right now. When I'll be leading prayer about Nigeria, I think two days from now, I will share down my vision, the way I saw it. I posted it on our platform about Moro. And on that day, I will ask the media to shut down. There are things we are going to deal with here. And prepare for it. We are all prepared for it. This is a war conference. Are you hearing me? I said, this is a war conference. Do I have warfare as here? Yeah. All right. Now, that aside, God has given me one favor. I could be standing praying and I'll see things. I saw one right now. And it is to the credit and to the glory of God. And it's for our own benefit. As we were praying, I saw someone I will call an angel. Coming with a rope, white rope. And he began to move. In fact, I saw a multitude more than what he said. It's as if we're all scattered abroad across this Gilgal land. And as this angel moved in, he came with a sharp knife. And I noticed what the angel was doing. The angel picked the sharp knife and from head like this, he began to peel off the skin. And in a very short time, within that period we prayed, everybody's skin was off. And I was watching. I began to see bleeding on everybody's body. And I was wondering what next was going to happen instantly the bleeding dried up and then i saw everybody clothed with different robes and garments and then the lord said to me i have renewed the covenant of the destinies i have with these people because the angel of circumcision has come in here this evening somebody lift up your hand and say my destiny my prayer life my prayer life. My destiny, my prayer life. My destiny, my prayer life. I am moving from here. I am moving from as here. As God's battle axe. As God's battle To acts. go forth. To go forth. And fulfill my destiny. And fulfill my destiny. And fulfill the destiny. And fulfill the destiny. That God has for our nation. God has for our nation. Open your mouth and give him oh, praise. thank you Lord Jesus.
Worship him in the Holy Ghost. Just as I am without one plea, but thy the blood was shed for me, and thou that beest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Lift up your hands and just give him glory. The glory of the Lord is here. Maybe you are among the person that the Lord just circumcised. There was a peeling off of your old skin. There's a new garment of diverse colors. Like a coat of many colors. To bring forth your destiny. To release you to your world. To make you to go to the field where your battle axe is needed. There shall be no hindrance. No demonic foundation will hinder anyone. Come on, speak in the Holy Ghost. Speak in the Holy Ghost. People of God, lift up your hands. There's a great glory here for someone. When circumcision is completed, healing will take place. Then you can enter your Gilga. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Adiana, Diana, Diana. Hold somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. Together we are triumphant. Together we are triumphant. Shatala Baya Baya. Yetiana, Diana, Diana, Diana. Rabba, Baba, 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 Help, help, help from on high. Help from on high. In Jesus' name we declare. As your hands are lifted together with that person, can we agree that as those of us who have not enrolled before in this school enrolled tonight, and those who have enrolled before wants to go higher, that nobody here will be hindered in any area and stopped when it is time to win a battle. I declare to you tonight by the Spirit of the Lord on the altar, you will never lose any battle again. The Lord has given you a new garment. The old skin is gone. The new you is imagined. And you will be showcased to the world. Somebody say loud, Amen. 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 Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. If you can clap better to the glory of God, it will be beautiful. Hallelujah. All right, we are going to take our offering. I don't know if Dr. Deborah Kachuku is around or here. Okay, there she comes. Please put your hands together as she comes to help promote the offering. And then we will hand over to the worship team. Please put your hands together. Thank you for being a blessing in the morning, woman of God. Please put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you for being a blessing. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I heard him talk about circumcision. We are in a season of maturity that we don't need anybody to praise God. Uh, false king, our flesh, we no longer contend with our spirit to release to God what belongs to him. So bring out your offering. Our offering is a representation of our sustaining our blood covenant. In the morning, I began to talk about identity. Identity. Moses had an issue of identity. An Egyptian in the flesh, but carrying a covenant with God in his blood by circumcision. We can no longer, none of us, can apply the knife anymore because Jesus has finished it. The best we can do is to promote his kingdom, promote his work, and to see that the reason why he died to bring humanity back to God is accomplished. And that's why we have gathered in the name of Jesus. Now, can we begin to thank God for the offering in your hand? And some of us may want to sow a seed today. And now, into the process and the time, the process of today, you just feel that as God is leading you, you just feel like, I want to part with this and I want to give it to God as a sign of appreciation for what he has done in my life. Prepare that seed. I won't call it an altar seed and a seed of circumcision. You can come and pray with you. If you just want to talk to God about battle with diabetics, you don't seem to have control of your flesh. There are sicknesses, things you are spending money on, but a lifestyle change can cut off that battle. Come, let me pray with you. Habits, something Paul said, I don't want to do, but I do it. And today you are saying, God, I, I bring this seed to end this war in my flesh. We want to connect with God at that level. Come, I'll pray with you. Come to the altar with your seed an offering to say, Lord, thank you. And in appreciation, as I give you this, I want you to please end this particular war in my life by this release. Any such person battling with any habit, addiction, lifestyle, something you don't want to do, it's not something to be ashamed of, to be honest. One way or the other, it may be an eating pattern, it may be a talking pattern, it may be something attitudinal, but it makes the ass head dull and it makes the ass head not sharp or effective. To the rest of us, raise up the offering. We are going to bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Eternal Father, we'll come with our offering and we are here to say thank you. Today is our day two. Lord, you have been amazing and on point. Lord, we thank you already for recovering of our spiritual life. Lord, we want to say thank you for recovering of our prayer life. Lord, we are here to say thank you for making it possible for us that we did not miss this year conference. This year, apostolic women would not have been the same if I missed coming to be sharpened as God battle acts. Lord, thank you, Lord, for choosing me Thank you, Lord, for appointing me to this great assignment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Before our anointed worship team comes, um, can the ushers be ready to receive the offering from them? While those of us who are here, you are saying, Lord, thank you for that circumcision and a new garment. That's what you are saying. The meeting ended with dealing with a new flesh, a new life, and we are here to say thank you. Lord, behold these ones. 
like Zibora, like Abigail, that quickly arranged in a matter of urgency. To meet with the Lord and ask for divine intervention. Lord, these ones have come to the altar to ask God, help me, Lord. Whether it is high blood pressure, whether it's diabetes, or any medical issue that you are battling with, but you know you don't have the powers. Yet, there are lifestyle issues. Or there's a covering cast that will not let you understand what to do or not allow you to do it. Thank God we are here. We are talking to God and we are asking him for help. I'm joining my prayer with you right now. I heard the Lord say that women here, women want to represent their husband or their children. Children that are battling with drugs, addiction. You may want to stand in for them to say, Lord, save my husband and save my children. It's a special battle seed. It's a special battle seed on the altar. They are saying, God, save my children. Save my husband. Lord, save me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want my children to die. And I don't want my husband to die. You may not have a stone right now to cut off the high skin. Or you may not be in a position like a big girl to gather the food and run to David. But he that is on the throne of David has come down to be with us, our Lord and our Savior. And on this exalted global altar of his... We are, coming on, we are coming on covenant of recognition. He said, he's the bridegroom of blood to me, a bridegroom of blood. I give him, he's in tying with the circumcision. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Something has already started to happen. There are already miracles here. There are already deliverances. All manners of reproaches are being rolled away right now in Jesus' name. On Giga, reproaches are rolled away. Kings are made. I heard the Lord declare that battle over masturbation and breaking it today in Jesus' name. That battle over pornography, I am breaking it today in the name of Jesus. Some of you may say, can it be a woman of God? Yes. It's a woman of God. She's battling with pornography. She's battling with masturbation. All manners of sin. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. For we know it's the power unto salvation. We are not ashamed to ask for help. Somebody cry and say, oh God, make haste to help me. Make haste, oh God, to save me and deliver me. For I'm in need and I'm in dear need, Lord. Make haste, oh God, and save me. I run to you in the name of Jesus. If it's on behalf of your son, let him know. If it's on behalf of your daughter, let him know. If it's on behalf of your calling or your ministry, let him know. There are strange patterns of afflictions, strange patterns of battles that have continued. But you have come with your battle seed as a battle cry on this altar to say, God, end it yourself. I have tried many times. I have fought this for years. I have put in my best. But somehow or the other, I cannot explain how these patterns continue to reoccur. But this morning I know that prayer has gone into my foundations on my on the Udubusha and in Udubusha mother. In our prayers have gone into by covenant into my foundations, and I'm bringing this seed from dealing with that to my election as God's battle axe to say, Lord, take over, take over, Lord, take hold of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, even as you are praying, I see the fire going into some of your bellies right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. And I see strange healings taking place right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree you shall not die in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this prayer and this assignment on this altar today, 
Father, I know that this affliction, this yoke, this torment, this perversion, these cravings, this urge, this inordinate desire will no longer continue in my life. In the name of Jesus. It will not follow me back from this altar. I'm back home in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I pray for you at the same time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just like Jesus encountered the man who came to seek help. He said, by this time, and it was exactly 1 p.m., and when he got home, he asked, what time was he healed? He connected the time of the miracle as at the time he was on the altar. May I declare and decree, as at this point in this altar, and on this time in Jesus' name, our sons, our daughters, our husbands, our wives, our children, our loved ones, our assignment, that being in the hand of the enemy and in the camp of the wicked, bound for destruction. That yoke is broken and broken forever. In the name of Jesus. God bless you as you drop your battle seed on the altar right now. Bialere na chimu di ma On digi he kona pugi me Bialere na chimu di ma Bianule All right, stand to your feet as we give Jesus a dance offering. Who you da? 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 Come on, somebody give Jesus a dance offering. Bianule. Bianule. 